Good evening and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting for Monday, April 1st, 2024. Uh, Kelly, will you please take the roll? Yes, Mayor. Mayor McEachern? Here. Assistant Mayor Kelly? Here. Councilor Tabor? Here. Council Cook? Here. Councilor Denton? Here. Council Blaylock? Here. Council Bagley? Here. Council Moreau? Here. Council Lombardi? Here. We're getting a little feedback yeah. on the TV. <laughs> I think we all thought we sounded a lot cooler than that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Um, before, uh, let's see. Do we get the feed? Looks like we got the feedback sorted. Nope, no, we didn't. <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> I think we're good. No. <coughs> How about now? No. no, it's a secret. This is crazy. It's like, can you hear me now? <laughs> wow. Again and again and again. And now. All right. Round of applause for Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, tonight we have a little bit bigger audience uh, for um, a couple of reasons. Um, but the first, uh, just want to make sure that everybody uh, knows the folks uh, sitting behind us. Uh, we have Student Government Day uh, coming up, and they're going to shadow us. Uh, for this evening, um, and then we're going to have Student Government Day on what day again? April 12th. April 12th. Um, and uh, that's when we're going to have the real business of the city get done, and all the folks that are shadowing us right now on the council and also um, in the staff are going to come together and, and we're going to start tackling the, the real issues of the city of Portsmouth, hopefully with leveler heads. Uh, then we preside over them on a, on a bi weekly basis. So, um, really excited. Um, Heather Wheeler and Michelle Wheeler, can you stand and, and be recognized uh, for this? And then I'm going to go through um, just the folks that we have um, up here. Um, and I'll, and I've, when I call your name, could you just please stand and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, introduce you all. So uh, first, uh, Nora Blakely, a city clerk, acting city clerk. Uh, she's not here. Um, uh, Tatum Aber. All right, uh, Tatum. Uh, Maria Acalono? Not here. Not here. Caden uh, Tapscott? Not here. Oh, not here. Track meet. There's a track meet. There's there's track a track meet. Oh, there's a track meet. Okay. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to, all right, well, that's uh, reasonable. All right, so um, I'm going to ask now uh, Sofia Modano, uh, who is here, uh, to stand and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. My greatest fear is that I mess up a word there and it doesn't go away. Um, all right. Uh, next, we have... Um, a few proclamations, uh, and I've asked um, the assistant mayor uh, to read the one on uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just, 
ask the mayor to read this as I have for the last few years because I think it's very important as a public um, an elected official that when a proclamation comes forward that means something to you that you read it and you express it um, as you feel comfortable. I myself am a sexual assault survivor and so I feel that it is my place that if I can tell my story and help one other person um, or countless other people feel more comfortable in their truth and hopefully seek out any help that they need that it is my place. So, April, oh, whereas April was declared National Sexual Assault Awareness Month in 2001 because sexual assault is prevalent in every community and affects all people regardless of age, social economic status, sexual orientation, gender, race, religion, or nationality. And whereas nearly one in five women in America experience rape or attempted rape, and nearly 44% of women and about 25% of all men experience some form of sexual violence in their lifetime. And whereas sexual assault can upheave the lives of victims and their families and can lead to depression, anxiety, PTSD, and other physical and emotional wounds. And whereas the Violence Against Women Act became federal law in 1994 and has been reauthorized in 2000, 2005, 2013, and 2022, which strengthened rape prevention education, crisis center support, training to law enforcement and frontline workers, and provided additional resources to victims. And whereas the city of Portsmouth has employed a victim witness advocate since 1999, and with the funding from the Violence Against Women Act to work with the police department to support victims of sexual assault. And whereas the city works with Haven, one of 12 crisis centers across the state to provide 24 seven support to victims of sexual assault, domestic violence and sexual harassment and stalking. And whereas the city reminds everyone that confidential local help is available 24 hours a day at Haven's Violence Prevention, Haven's Violence Prevention and Support Hotline, 603-994-SAFE. And whereas the city of Portsmouth stands with all New Hampshire prosecutors as centurions on the front lines advocating on behalf of victims of sexual assault. And now, therefore I, Daglin McEachern, mayor of the city of Portsmouth on behalf of the members of the city council and the citizens of Portsmouth do hereby pro proclaim April 2024 in Portsmouth as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And I call on all of our citizens to come together to reaffirm our commitment to ending sexual assault and supporting survivors. So I believe the prosecution unit is going to receive this. Yep. Yep. You want to take a? Oh wow! You want to take a picture? Sure. Okay. All right. Let's. We're going to file down and take a picture. I guess. Oh, this is very slow. Thank you, Assistant Mayor. Um, I've asked Councillor Cook uh, to read a proclamation on National Library Week. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and 
I am. I feel very fortunate tonight to be able to read this proclamation. Um, our library does so much for this community, and um, frankly, I'm very excited about all the work they've been doing for the solar eclipse planning for next week, which is the, the 8th December. of April, <laughs> which happens to fall during National Library Week. So, a proclamation. Whereas the National Library Week is celebrated April 7th through the 13th this year with the theme Ready, Set, Library. And whereas the Portsmouth Public Library gathers and shares the stories of the past, the records of the present, and the dreams of the future, it is one of the treasures of our city, open and free to all who wish to take advantage of the resources and guidance the library and its staff have to offer. And whereas Tuesday, April 9th, is recognized as National Library Workers Day and is therefore an occasion to celebrate the tremendous teamwork team who work tirelessly to keep our community informed, enlightened, engaged, and encouraged to follow the paths of inspiration that lead through the halls, walls, bookshelves, and archives of our library. And whereas Portsmouth Public Library provides a never-ending calendar of events, programs, courses, discussions, and opportunities for young and old, offering a place for the discovery of new ideas and new friends. Now, therefore, I, Kate Cook, on behalf of Daglin McEachern, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, and on behalf of the members of the City Council and citizens of Portsmouth, do hereby proclaim April 7th through the 13th, 2024, as National Library Week in Portsmouth, and call upon the residents of Portsmouth to get to know our library even better than they may already, and to recognize our library professionals as being dedicated to elevating our minds and lives, because they know there's always more to the story. Yeah. Given with the hand and the seal of, with with my hand and the seal of the city of Portsmouth on this first day of April, 2024. Yeah, we, we have, uh... Library Director Christine Fries to come up here and uh, accept this. I'm thinking in terms of. Okay. Your counterpart, with it. Your counterpart. All right, Library Shadow Director uh, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you guys just come up? We'll take a picture up here since it's Monty. Can we do that? Goodness. People move. All right. So we're just gonna stand. And recognize Dan. I'm going to hand this to the mayor. To go to you. Okay. Since he's in the middle, I'm going to pass this down to the mayor so that you can stand in the middle. Okay. So we can actually get you. I'm moving my chair out of the way. Kids are going to come back and be like, how was council? It's great. It's really what they say, just taking pictures, <laughs> out proclamations. All right. Um, we have one more. Um, so uh, this is National Community Development uh, Month, and uh, proud to be able to read this. Whereas April is National Community Development Month, created to celebrate the Housing and Urban Development Community Development Block Grant CDBG program, and whereas 2024 marks the 50th anniversary of signing the Housing and Community Develop Act and the creation of the federal CDBG program, and whereas since 1977 the City of Portsmouth and its community development office have administered CDBG program funds to make a positive impact on the city and its residents. It remains committed to creating a sustainable and dignified quality of urban life by leveraging federal dollars to promote fair, safe, and affordable housing assistance for precariously housed and homeless, establishing critical infrastructure, making public facility improvements, and delivering quality public services. And whereas the CDBG program is a valuable program that has made significant contributions that benefit low to moderate income individuals and households by supporting these infrastructure in initiatives. The members of our community impacted include older adults, people with disabilities, those experiencing chronic or frequent homelessness, and at-risk 
at-risk youth, and whereas the CDBG program effectively seeks solutions that expand economic opportunity and social services in our community through private and public partnerships and that address prioritized needs as identified through community input. Now, therefore, I, Dago McCachran, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, on behalf of the members of the City Council and the citizens of Portsmouth, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2024 in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, as Community Development Month and commend the good work championed by all those who serve the interests of our citizens through fair and effective community development given with my hand and the seal of the City of Portsmouth on this first day of April 2024. Uh, here uh, to accept this. Uh, Elise does so much that is not uh, encapsulated just uh, in this work, but she works tirelessly on making sure that we can effectively use every one of these daughters, uh, dollars. I couldn't uh, imagine a better person uh, to receive uh, this proclamation. Thanks for all you do for the city of Portsmouth. We should come up here and, and we'll take a picture up here. By the end of this, we will. Perfect. Your Honor, um, I'll move that we close the non-public and seal the minutes. Oh, <laughs> closing it. Okay, yeah, I'd wait a motion to close the non-public and seal the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Happy days. Um, next, um, so we have the, um, so, this is a uh, this is a special one. Um, we have an Amer a mayor's award, um, and it's I let this. I mean, most of a lot of people are here, so it's not a surprise. This is going to to Carl Deemer uh, for all of his work uh, on the rec board and for Portsmouth uh, over the last really uh, over three decades. Um, and uh, I have uh, I have some notes um, because. Normally I wing it and I forget some things, um, and it's important uh, that uh, it's important uh, to recognize Carl for everything uh, that he's done. Uh, but it's also important to see just the breadth of of what he's accomplished uh, for other people, for the city of Portsmouth, um, you know, for for Carl and 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 your family to uh, to get the kudos you deserve. But to put the bar out there for others in Portsmouth to be able to. Uh, hope to live up uh, to the to the level that 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 Carl has exemplified. So um, I'm going to read this, and then I just have uh, one more thing to say that I thought of while I was um, sitting here, um, and then I'm going to I'm going to come down and present this, and I'm going to pass the mic uh, to Carl for the order of events. And I see that public comments next, and some people signed up um, for public comment uh, as well. So. I want to take a moment to say a few words uh, about Carl Deemer on the occasion of his retirement from the city's recreation board after 23 years of service, uh, including 12 years as board chair. Carl is a sterling example of the concept that the most important job in Portsmouth is citizen, and those that go above and beyond as citizens volunteers are our lifeblood. Throughout the years we have worked together uh, as mayor and council, we've enjoyed what a colleague in his civilian life in the auto industry recognized when he said, above and beyond Carl's obvious knowledge and deep understanding, uh, we have always valued his willingness to sit and listen to various ideas, endorse him as a tremendous asset to any organization. In his 35 years of public service to his community, he has contributed substantially to the quality of life enjoyed by all of our residents. He has provided invaluable insight, engagement, and institutional knowledge over the decades to a number of organizations, including Pro Portsmouth, where he served as Vice President, the Portsmouth Shamrock Football Organization as Vice President and Treasurer, the Portsmouth East Baseball League as VP, and the Portsmouth Baseball League as Player Agent, Portsmouth Bay Ruth Baseball League as Coach, VP, and President, and as Coach for Portsmouth High School Offseason Indoor Soccer League. In addition, he served on the Middle School School Building Committee and worked tirelessly to relocate Alumni Field and the Connie Bean Center to create this outstanding facility at the heart of our city. 
And it's that, that last point that it's, it's difficult, I think, to uh, encapsulate, like what we do as a city is, um, is really embodied by, uh, by Carl. Uh, he got involved when his kids were young, um, and then he stayed involved uh, for a long time. And the Connie Bean is the best example of that. I remember going to the old Connie Bean. You know, I was partial to the old Connie Bean. There was a lot of, you know, basements and cool things, you know, places you could get in trouble. Uh, and, um, and I didn't really think about the work that went into the new Connie Bean until just a couple years ago when my, my daughters were young. And it's really easy to think about all of the work that needs to go on in the city of Portsmouth. It has to go on all the time. It can't just be when you need something that you're going to strike up the band and march towards that. That's might how you get started, but we always need something in Portsmouth, and we can't do it all on our own. We need folks like Carl that are going to continue beating that drum, rallying people, so that when you don't pay attention to something, you know, for 20 years, you go off to college, you come back, you raise a family, and you come to the Connie Bean, you are delighted by just the amazing service that is to the city of Portsmouth. And so as one dad to another, um, I thank you for looking out for all of Portsmouth uh, and creating a hell of an example uh, for the rest of us to fall. Thank you, Carl. Somebody help me get this framed. Um, <laughs> I also have a, uh, a door stop for keeping the, the, keep the door open. Keeping the door open. Um, and if I can shake your hand, I got a, uh, a city coin um, for all the work you did. So, Carl, the mic is yours. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. We're not going to, you know, three minutes in your heart. Uh, it doesn't apply. You can talk as long as you want. Um, so thank you, Carl. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor. Just prepared a little something I wanted to speak to. Uh, first of all, thank you, Mayor, City Council, City Manager, and City Attorney. Um, and I also want to thank all the wonderful people, my friends, family, and neighbors, and people I worked with on the boards uh, that are here tonight to honor me. I'm very flattered, um, and I just uh, honored that they're all here. So uh, I feel it's been a privilege and an honor to serve Portsmouth for the rec in, in the Recreation Board for over 23 years. I want to thank Todd Henley and each one of his great staff for the great job they've done and the wonderful reception and just the privilege of working with his department for so many years. Uh, 44 years ago, I was fortunate enough to be stationed at Pease Air Force Base, and it was my last base. At the time, I fell in love with the city of Portsmouth, so I decided to stay. I knew this was the place I wanted to settle with my wife and raise my family. Every neighborhood had its own little character, and it was just full of good people all throughout. That made it even more attractive. Of course, it was a little saltier back then, with the fine establishments as the Ranger Club, Starlight Club, <laughs> Roses, Victory Spa, and Duff Stump, and of course, Wally's. Uh, that has all since changed since then. Uh, it's evolved. Portsmouth has evolved into a beautiful uh, city that we all can be very, very proud of. I also knew it was a city that I wanted to get involved with by giving back time to the community in some way to make it better. I also know that volunteerism is so important to promoting a healthy community for the residents. As you know, we always have a little bit of shortage of volunteers. 
I know that from many organizations that I was volunteering in, and it always ran thin. Uh, I believe everyone, if everyone just gave a little bit of their time to serve on a board, a committee, a sports team, or in the arts, or anything that would keep improving the quality of life uh, in, for our future of Portsmouth, it would benefit everybody, just a little bit. You know, um, everybody should just give a little time back, give something back to your community. That's most important, and that was my focus. You get out of something, what you put into it. And that was always my mantra. After spending many years of volunteering with Pro Portsmouth, uh, the Shamrocks, Shamrocks football, Little League baseball, Babe Ruth baseball, the high school boys indoor soccer, middle school committee, and the recreation board, I felt it would be a good time to take a little bit of a break. <laughs> so, you know, not that I've stopped volunteering, but I'm just taking a little break. So I want to thank Portsmouth for all the opportunities it gave me over the years and to give back, and hopefully it made a difference for the future and all the residents of Portsmouth. I can't thank you all enough and appreciate it. We have a, uh, a f so we don't have any acceptance of minutes or of recognitions of volunteer committee reports. We do have public comment. Um, if I could uh, split out, uh, we have uh, Chair of the School Board, uh, Nancy uh, uh, Clayberg. Um, would you come, uh, you have a few words and you've listed the topic of Carl Deemer. I've been, tr I tried to get any dirt, just like levity, you know, like this and Everybody was very tight-lipped, so maybe Nancy's holding out, and that's just where she's going to deliver it, but I doubt it. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Nancy Novelin Clayberg. I live at 405 FW Hartford Drive, Portsmouth. I have known Carl Diemer for over 30 years. Not only is he and his fabulous wife, Joanna, <laughs> dear, dear, dear friends, but his, uh, his longtime service to our community has made our city a much better place for not only our kids, but for everyone. For example, I served on the committee that was created to build a senior citizen center for Portsmouth. Carl chaired that committee. His ability to organize the interested parties, conduct research, and work with the city staff to secure the building from the federal government, remember that was quite a, a oh, feat, yeah. <laughs> was impeccable. No stone was left unturned under Carl's leadership. And today we have a thriving, attractive senior center that is enjoyed by hundreds and hundreds of citizens. What a great accomplishment for Portsmouth. In addition, the many projects and services that Carl has provided for our youth is admirable. I remember years ago, Carl was instrumental in merging the two Little League teams in Portsmouth. There was often tension and discord between the two, and Carl was very influential in ending that rift, and we have a very successful Little League program today. And finally, his many years of service as the chair of the rec department. The accomplishment would take hours to, his accomplishments would take hours to describe. Thank you, Carl, for your many years of dedication. I treasure you as a friend, a fellow colleague, and your tireless contributions to Portsmouth. You are a fabulous husband, father, friend, and community contributor. I will love you forever. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Dry eyes. All right, uh, Bob Bogardis, <laughs> on the Robert Bogardis on the topic of Carl Diemer. Well, I can't tell you how uh, grateful I am to have met Carl. He sponsored me to volunteer, good word, on the Recreation Committee and be involved. And uh, as you all know, the city of Portsmouth is a beautiful place to live. I'm fortunate from the history of. I'll just mention this, my mother-in-law, Elizabeth Badger Pennington, good friend of Connie Beans, established the Golden Age Club way back in the day before there was a, quote, senior center. 
It's and she nice arranged thing. bus trips to the public gardens and to the libraries and history and everything. So the foundation was there. So when I came and I met Carl and I volunteered, I was grateful and happy to give back time and resources. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. So next up, um, Dave Allen on the rail trail, and I think that will do it for public comment. And I would like to say, um, while I would appreciate everybody that came out to to see Carl uh, on uh, this momentous day, please don't feel as though you have to sit and listen to our entire council meeting. Um, I'm sure Carl would love the company uh, down at the Elks um, or wherever else he's taking everybody. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Honorable Mayor, and uh, City Council, City Manager Kennard, and City Attorney Morrell. Um, I'm here, well, first, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I've worked with Carl both professionally as volunteers during the Babe Ruth days, and uh, I agree wholeheartedly that that man truly deserves that award, and I'm very glad to see him get it. Um, but I'm here also to speak about the rail trail, which is actually um, in an exciting phase right now. I am a board member of the New Hampshire Seacoast um, Greenway Alliance, and with, uh, we're a 501c3, and our mission is to provide regional coordination, policy development, management, maintenance, fundraising, and promotion of the New Hampshire Seacoast Greenway. Um, and to that end, in 2022, we, uh, working with Rockingham Planning Commission, secured a grant that we used to do trailhead, uh, some trailhead design, some trail connection design, and also some signage design that's going to be part of the trailhead. And um, I'm here to thank the Portsmouth staff for actually bringing the first phase of that to fruition. Um, City Manager Knard and, and uh, the uh, deputy city manager and Peter Rice kind of helped administratively as we put this thing together, and um, we ended up with trail markers that begin at the end of Eileen Dundero Foley Drive and the intersection of the, the new trail and extend all the way to Greenland, um, 3.2 miles with a mile marker every tenth of a mile. And um, so really I'm here to, to thank the crew that, that – uh, put in such a great effort and um, from the Peter Rice being there and coordinating some meetings with, with his staff, uh, Jamie McCarty, who's the GIS uh, manager, did the layout of the mile markers, um, Corin Hollowell, who is like a, a complete gem for this city, uh, led the staff and, and provided resources. They were there when we needed them. and. Um, they were just a pleasure to work with, and he had four men who worked with him over the course of a day and a half. Now, when we started planning this, we had um, we thought this was going to be a, a four, three or four day project. They did it in a day and a half, and if I beep, I, I do want to mention them all: Glenn Kelleher, John Gilbert, Josh Anton, Antel, and Ryan Tibbetts um, were instrumental in making this go, and they were they were fabulous to work with. And I would also like to recognize the, um, we put in the post, we got all the posts done for the entire length, and then the, uh, the Portsmouth High School cycle te cycling team under uh, Charlie Bordage's tutelage, um, we had four riders, Ilya Ramdanovich, who's here tonight, Max Shorter, Ben Croto, and Derek um, Bulbo, uh, who are, it was just, a pleasure to watch these guys install all 34 signs on a cold Friday afternoon, and it was a pleasure to, to work with them also. So thank you, City of Portsmouth, for your support, and we've got Greenland, Rye, and uh, Northampton following in your footsteps. So, Thanks, thank Dave. You. Yep. I see some people rising that want to keep, and you didn't sign up, but we'll allow it if you're speaking about Carl. All right. 
is I was just reminded of the, the, the rail trail. One of my favorite memories of Carl uh, was doing the mare's ride. Uh, you know, I didn't even know you owned a bike, but you do. You look great on it. And uh, <laughs> it went fast. All right. Uh, <laughs> Jackie Kelly Pitts and then... I, uh, I, Jackie Kelly Pitts, 40 Bedford Way. I just wanted to say thank you, Carl. And not necessarily list the litany of accomplishments, but the fact that Carl was a perfect chair, a chair that let you express your dissension, right, Carl? And we had plenty to dissent about over the years. I've served with him all the years he's been on the board, but he always had the patience he always listened, and he didn't condemn or judge for opinion. And for that, I want to thank him for being I, what I believe to be a perfect chair and a perfect gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Todd Henley, Recreation Director. Um, I just want to say thank you, Carl, uh, for all of your years of dedication to the city of Portsmouth, especially to the being such an advocate for recreation in the city. Um, I spent 12 years on the Recreation Board with you, alongside you, uh, and then this past three years um, working with you as the Recreation Director. And I just want to thank you for that guidance. Uh, I want to thank your family for allowing him to, to take that time to, uh, to dedicate, um, you know, a lot, a lot of hours uh, working together. Um, and so I also just want to say on behalf of uh, my staff and former staff that are here, um, just thank you for, for everything you've done for the city and uh, we're going to miss you. Well, um, th thank you, Carl. Uh, there's a... Uh, there's simply a lot that, uh, you know, somebody asked me uh, just yesterday, um, and I'll let the cat out of the bag, uh, Carl offered to come to our neighborhood yesterday dressed as the Easter Bunny. Uh, hopefully my daughter's not watching uh, right now. Um, but uh, when uh, you left and you get the, the uh, it was an opportunity for our neighborhood to, to gather a bit and, and speak to uh, each other, meet new people um, there. Uh, somebody asked me, well, where do I find out all that's going on? And started listing out some of the things that are going on. And, and more than, you know, recreation, um, you uh, and the rec board um, and the rec department, uh, you create community um, and you create an opportunity to come together. And in this day and age, getting off your phones and, and getting outside and, and or getting inside, um, is an opportunity to create community and so we are indebted uh, to the community you recreated uh, here through uh, your volunteerism uh, it's it's hard to uh, for me to express just how grateful this community is for for all the work that you did uh, and will continue to do uh, to build it so thank you Carl And if you guys wanted to leave, this would be a great time to do it. But I'm not kicking you out, but I don't want a couple of different things, and all of a sudden you're here at 11 o'clock. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 1030. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Oh, my, I have no idea. Yeah, 
<laughs> okay, so we're on to the city manager Conard's uh, items which require action. City manager. Thank you, Your Honor. We have. Uh... Thanks, Todd. We have uh, three items for you tonight. The first is a request for first reading regarding electrical vehicle charging station ordinance amendments that are back before the council at long last. You will recall in May of 2022, the City Council referred draft zoning ordinance amendments submitted by Councillor Denton to the Planning Board for its review and recommendation. And it uh, took a little time in the queue of other zoning to be looked at. The Planning Board began in earnest in November of 23 and has been working on revisions since then. The original referral included adding a specific charging levels to the use tables in the ordinance. And we all felt that with the set speed of change in the industry, having broad definitions that will not become obsolete would be the best approach. And the Planning Board took that broad approach during the course of its work on the amendments so that the ordinance would not be quickly outdated once adopted. The proposed amendments in the packet tonight capture EV charging and infrastructure that should remain relevant with the future technology anticipated. At the February 29th, 2024 Planning Board meeting, the board voted to schedule a public hearing on the amendments after a legal review, which was shared with uh, our legal department and other staff and the chair and the group made edits to simplify and condense the attachments that are being considered this evening. The Planning Board held the public hearing on March 21st, considering the revised amendments and the board voted to recommend the City Council hold first reading at this meeting. Uh, we will request first reading. Uh, with the zoning amendments, uh, with the following edits that are mentioned in the packet, but I'll spell them out here, to change EV fueling spaces 1 and 2 to EV fueling space A and B, and to change use 19.70 EV fueling space B as an accessory use from permitted to conditional use permit in the G1, G2B, and CD4W districts. This motion passed unanimously, and as such, uh, we are looking to schedule first reading at the April 15th City Council meeting. Councilor Denton. Your Honor, I move to hold first reading of the proposed zoning ordinance amendments related to electric vehicle charging stations at the April 15th, 2024 City Council meeting. Second. Any discussion? I'll simply add that um, I may very well have some amendments to the amendments under my name at the next meeting so everyone knows what they'll be prior to that meeting. Um, you will have them in the uh, in the packet in advance of Correct. that? Correct. That okay. is my goal. Great. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Item number two is a request for FY24 bond rescinding. And through this effort, we seek to uh, your approval to rescind the unissued borrowing authority from a bond authorization approved on April 6, 2020, related to the acquisition of a fire apparatus. As the project has, be, uh, has been completed. We have acquired the vehicle with an unused balance in the amount of $58,635. And to rescind this amount requires a majority vote of the council. And as you may recall, we've done this at least once since I've been city manager. An unissued loan authorization remains on the city books indefinitely and is used to calculate, uh, used in our, in our debt limit calculation according to RSA 33 until such time as the monies would be borrowed or rescinded. And as we don't need them and as a part of financial housekeeping, we are looking to rescind the unissued authorization in the amount of $58,635. Wait a motion. Your Honor, I um, I move to approve the rescinding of the remaining bargain authority with regards to the following resolution: Number five dash twenty twenty for one point four million. Rescind the amount of fifty eight thousand six hundred and thirty four thirty five dollars. Second. Any discussion? Motion. Councilor Cook. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I just have a question for the city manager. Um, do we know if we have any more um, outstanding bond authorizations that that we have not spent the entirety of the funds and we should be seeing those coming back to the council? I have not been apprised by the finance team that we do. It is my understanding with that, that with this rescission we are now um, recognizing what we have not yet authorized or needed to authorize. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. The third item would be relative to the disposition of real estate and the matter of the three tax-deeded residential properties. 
There is a pretty long and involved memorandum in your packet from Deputy City Attorney McCourt regarding these properties known as 508 Richards Avenue, 150 Bartlett Street, and 323 Islington Street. Uh, and Trevor is here to answer any questions you might have. It's a complicated arrangement, and it, it's fair to say that it is not typical for the city to take by tax deed parcels in general, let alone residential parcels. And um, the memo will tell you that the owner must fail to pay, pay property taxes to the city for at least three years before we can even take such an action. So our staff goes through a pretty exhaustive attempt to collect. And as it has been the case every year until this time, this past fall, we've always been able to get the residential taxpayers to pay, if, if not at the last day, at the last hour of the last day. Uh, and in this case, we have one owner uh, representing three properties that failed to pay. And so as such, we are all learning how to go through the disposal process for residential properties because it does not make sense for the city to be the long-term landowner of these properties. So the matter is looking for your approval to be referred to planning, which is what we do for the disposition of real estate or their recommendation and report back. Uh, is there a motion? Your Honor, I move to refer the matter of appropriate disposal options for 508 Richards Avenue, 150 Bartlett Street, and 323 Islington Street to the Planning Board for recommendation at its April 18, 2024 regular meeting. Second. Any further discussion? Just a clarification then. Um, this will be sent to the Planning Board. Correct. A recommendation will be brought back uh, to the to the city council. council correct and through that recommendation will there be a any um will there be uh like a public hearing on the planning board or no simply a discussion of the planning board that's a good question the planning board may request a public uh, a more formal conversation and here's trevor <clears throat> uh thank you your honor um to answer your question no a, a public hearing would not be necessary or scheduled um, this is the kind of business that is handled very regularly at the planning board level. Recommendations on, the di on accepting interests in land or disposing of interests in land, conveying easements, for example, that they, uh, they handle all the time without public hearing. Um, and the ordinance does not require a public hearing at the planning board level. All right. Thank you. Uh, Council Mara, question for... Does it require any public hearing at the city council level when it comes back and we're making a choice of which direction to go in? It does not. It does not at that level. Councilor Cook. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, the memorandum suggested that it would be appropriate for the council to provide some guidance going in, in sending this to the planning board. Is there any um, particular path that is um, that you or the city manager would consider most appropriate for the city um, moving forward? Um, yes, thank you, Councilor. And, and to answer your question, and I apologize for uh, the, the length of the memo and how involved it was, but I, I just wanted to lay everything out as clearly as possible and provide as much information as I re reasonably could so that you could really think about this. Um, and the, the one thing that I would just really like to highlight is that we are dealing with constitutional concerns here, people's right to their property, um, and we have to avoid conducting an, un, un, an unconstitutional um, taking or a taking without just compensation. And uh, as we all know, uh, property prices within the city of Portsmouth are quite high, and there is a considerable amount of equity um, in each of these properties. And although the city is owed a, a pretty substantial sum on each of these properties, uh, it, would, it would not be constitutional for us to take more than that value. Therefore, um, it's, it's, part of, it's part of our duty to return that equity back to um, the previous owners, uh, however, however difficult it may be given the, the complicated ownership structure in these cases. Um, therefore, my recommendation, the easiest way without, um, where you don't risk endangering any of those concerns would be just to dispose of the properties um, at an auction uh, to the highest bidder. That would be, the, that would be my recommendation. So a, a clarification on that. Um, so for purposes of if we wanted to like a recommendation, we'd like to make it affordable housing or something like that would come with the caveat of lowering the value of those houses or not justly compensating the owner of uh, the housing or the, 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 the property as such and uh, would run afoul of any constitution requirements we have to justly compensate uh, that owner or owners of the property. 
Sure. So, I, I, Mayor, I, I tried to anticipate that the council may uh, seek some way to uh, ensure that these properties are used for affordable housing. Um, I don't know that that's the right that this is the right vehicle to accomplish that goal. However, I did provide some some options in there which could bring about affordable housing in a constitutional manner uh, for these properties. But they would they would all entail uh, the expenditure of some funds. Uh, probably substantial funds by the city uh, in order to compensate the prior owners uh, one way or another. Councilor Murrow. Has investigation and research into each of the properties as to what other outstanding liens besides the city are on the properties? Has um, that been done? Yes. Yes, they, there, was, there was only one mortgage um, on any of the three properties. It was an older mortgage, and we were unable to track down the, the, uh, the mortgage holder. Councilor Bagley. Thank you, Your Honor. And this, it, it, as you stated, this is a fairly unusual, at least for the City of Portsmouth, to do this. Is When this comes back to the Council, would it be possible to provide context um, for maybe previous times that this has been done, even if it had, we have to go back quite some time? Just um, sh Sure. I don't know that, I mean, I can certainly look. I don't know what I'll be able to find. It, it may be more useful uh, if you have specific questions about where this has been done elsewhere. Um, we are working on trying to identify a, uh, some outside counsel um, because any work that is done um, on behalf of the city can be built against the, the properties. Um, and there is, there's a firm in particular that specializes in tax deeding of properties. And this is something that is done in other communities you know, all the time. Um, and and it, it's just more efficient to use that, you know, someone who specializes in this uh, exact thing. So perhaps if you have specific questions, we could have them answer, answer those questions. If I may, Your Honor, I don't think in our lifetime we can identify an example where the city has taken a residential property. No. Okay. Thank you. Motion on the floor um, to refer the matter of appropriate disposal options for 508 Richards Avenue, 150 Bartlett Street, and 323 Islington Street to the Planning Board for a recommendation at its April 18th uh, regular meeting. Any further discussion? Councilman Barty. Uh, I just wanted to um, go over the piece where there are uh, renters in these buildings and how that is handled. Um, sure, sure. So there is uh, an individual who is renting at 150 Bartlett Street. That's a five-unit building, and one of the units is occupied um, out, of, out of all five. And then over at 508 Richards, that building is fully occupied. It is used by the Seacoast Repertory Theater uh, to house some of their uh, long-term actors who come in from, from different parts of uh, the country, and, and I understand uh, outside of the country as well um, that live there and what the city did after we we uh, executed the tax deeds was we just continued the ongoing lease agreements um, that each of those uh, people have had um, but of course uh, you know that that'll be a landlord tenant issue for the the next owner as to how long those lease agreements um, stand and, and what they do with them but but 323 Islington is, is unoccupied okay Councilor Lombardi, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All right, next up is the consent agenda. Your Honor, I move to adopt the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, next up, email correspondence. Um, no, I didn't. I is there a motion? <laughs> Um, yes, uh, I move to accept and place on file. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, next up, we have a few uh, uh, acceptance of uh, resignation. Uh, Jane Begala from the Planning Board, Herb Lloyd from the Sustainability Committee, and Steve DeTrolio from the Sustainability Committee. 
Your Honor, I'd move to accept with regret the resignations of Jane Begala, Herb Lloyd, and Steve DeTrolio with a letter of thanks to be sent for their service to the city. Second. Um, I wanted to uh, just say a few words on that. If I might, I'm going to pass the gavel to the assistant mayor. Um, uh, I wanted to um, specifically on uh, Ms. Begala, um, I wanted to uh, extend uh, my sincere appreciation for Ms. Begala's commitment and contributions over the years. It was my honor to support her nomination by former Mayor Beckstead, and I appreciate the hard work she put into creating the previous master plan under Mayor Blaylock. Her efforts uh, have been instrumental in navigating the complexities of community planning and development in Portsmouth. It's impossible to look at Portsmouth today and not notice her involvement in shaping the city we love. We thank you. As we now must put a new member uh, to, the, um, to the planning board, I wanted to discuss the role of planning board members. It is not accurate to believe the planning board has the ability to somehow curb, limit, or stop growth and development on the application level. The planning board creates a master plan to guide development in the city, recommends the city council adopt laws and rules designed to implement the master plan, and then fairly and evenly apply those rules to any given application. Put another way, if a member doesn't like a project, but the project follows the rules we as a city make, the application should receive approval. Based on why they feel a project was deficient, the planning board can recommend rule changes to the council for future projects. We did this last year when requiring affordable units for the first time for any density bonus. This matters because the fundamental misunderstanding about the role of a planning board takes power away from those who actually wield it, you. Community engagement is not a mere formality, but the cornerstone upon which the efficacy and relevance of our planning efforts rest. The strength of our community planning does not lie solely in the hands of appointed or elected officials, but vibrantly within the active participation of every Portsmouth resident. It's here in the diverse voices and collective action of our community that we find the true power to shape a future that reflects our shared values and visions. It is clear Portsmouth is experiencing a rapid amount of development. We are looking at meeting this moment in different ways from what we do with public land to updating and implementing our master plan, whatever path we take, whatever we do, we need your engagement and involvement. I was impressed with the people who came out for the listening sessions on affordable housing. I urge everyone to keep that energy up and we'll get the master plan and government we deserve. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next up, appointments to be voted. Reappointment of Samantha Collins to the Conservation Commission, reappointment of Kathleen Bergeron to the Portsmouth Housing Authority, and reappointment of Catherine Lynch to the Recreation Board. Uh, Your Honor, I move to reappoint Samantha Collins to the Conservation Commission, uh, Kathleen Bergeron to the Portsmouth Housing Authority, and Catherine Lynch to the Recreation Board. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, on to our city council uh, members. And um, just as we uh, get going, I know that um, we, you guys can't stay all night uh, here, so I was hoping we get to just have one more uh, item under uh, your name under Councilor Cooks, and then uh, we can take a short recess uh, if that's all right, and you guys can get home and Go do some homework or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever my daughter doesn't do. Um, all right. <laughs> Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And it is important that we get them home because it's end of term, so I know they all have a lot of homework. Um, so uh, you will see in your packet a single-use food service wear reduction or skip the stuff policy. I would move to send the draft single-use food service wear or skip the stuff policy to the Sustainability Committee for a report back to the City Council in May 2024 and to the student participants at Student Government Day for their consideration on, on April 12, 2024. Second. 
Um, and Your Honor, I am bringing forward this policy, which I'm sure everyone here on the council thinks seems very familiar, um, because they introduced an ordinance um, a little over a month ago. And what we realized in the process of the discussions with the legal department and with the sustainability committee is that the ordinance would be very difficult to enforce. And so we transitioned the language to a policy to start this process of skip the stuff in the community. Um, I know that we have some really active participants already, but we're trying to encourage more participation through a policy because by adopting a policy, our health department can talk about it and we can start having education within the community. And hopefully we have a lot of uptake over the course of the next year. And then we can reevaluate and see if there is another mechanism that makes it uh, possible to have an ordinance that is enforceable at that stage. Council Blaylock. Thank you, Honor. Um, thank you, Council Cook, for bringing this forward. I especially want to thank the Portsmouth High School Eco Club, because um, they're the ones that originally brought this forward. Um, but yeah, I think a big part of this is education of it, and I'm looking forward to what the, um, the student government, um, student council can do. Um, and But I know we're planning on training our staff down at the Old Ferry Landing, um, so I encourage all other restaurant um, establishments to trade, to talk about it and tell their staff. Any further? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, with that, we'll take a uh, four minute recess uh, to allow uh, students to go home. Thank you.
Sorry, I'm just going to Welcome back. Um, I don't ever know why I put a time number uh, on any of the recesses. <laughs> they never align to any of it. I just think four sounded like a right number. All right. Um, uh, Councilor Bagley. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move to create a dedicated web page on the Portsmouth City website designed specifically for renters. This page will feature a comprehensive collection of helpful links and resources, including but not limited to state and city housing ordinances, guidelines, and regulations. Additionally, the page will offer valuable information for first-time home buyers and other relevant topics deemed beneficial by the city, catering to the needs and interests of our renting community. If I get a second, I'll speak to it. Second. Thank you. Um, I, I think, you know, it, since I've been on the council and talking to a, a number of our constituents, there can be an impression among some of our population who rent, even long-term renters, that their voice is not uh, somehow as meaningful or as important as those uh, that may be homeowners. And uh, that certainly is not true. And I think this is just a way for the city to kind of reinforce to our rental population, which makes up about 50% of our population, that you know they, their, their voice and their opinion is just as every bit as important as uh, somebody that may own a home here in the city. Any other discussion? Councilor Bullock? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and thank you, Councilor Bagley, for bringing this forward. Um, I, I, I agree. I think um, there's a large portion of our community that are renters. Um, I was a renter at one stage in my life in Portsmouth. Um, but I do, I have heard from some renters that they, they some don't even know they're allowed to vote, um, which was surprising. Um, so I think any education um, is helpful and get everyone engaged. Any other discussion? Councillor Tabor. Um, I think we're seeing uh, an increase in the number of long-term renters who are part of the city because as one of the Portsmouth listeners group said the rungs on the ladder to your owning your first first home are broken and so we've got renters uh, happily renting five seven eight ten years um, and uh, I think it'd be great to have them participate I think many of them do participate there are other renters who are transient and moving through, and um, this is a one or two year or three year stop. So, but I, I think it would be helpful to know if you've um, discussed with staff and, and sort of made an inventory of the most important things um, that would be on the page. Um, I did briefly speak yeah. with the city manager. Um, and the idea is not so much that this web page is the end all be all, it's just the introduction of continuing the outreach of the council in the city to our rental population. Uh, to your point, I think with the housing prices where they are, we're gonna see a continuation of, of semi-permanent renters and we wanna make sure that everyone in the city feels included and understands the availability of the resources that we have. Your Honor. Um, Sister Mayor. Thank you. Just a question, Councilor Reggie. Where do you see this page landing? Do you see this under the city clerk? Do you see this, I guess, where as you navigate um, our, our city website, it's, it's broken down in categories very well in departments. So I, I guess my question is where do you see this? Um, so I, I would hope to see it on the banner for initially, and then I, I think our wonderful communications department uh, led by Monty and, and Stephanie would get the word out. But uh, most of the people I talk to that are good at navigating the city website, they use the search function because there's such a vast amount of information. So one uh, area that I think it should be linked to is the uh, first time home buyers program. Um, because if, if you are a runner, you may have, you know, you should at least be aware that we have a first time home buyers uh, webpage. I would just say that if we're, if we're um, I would think naturally it would be potentially fall under this, the, at least the, the landing page. It can have whatever links we, we have. Um, we have a great amount of resources, especially now if you go to the, um, the, the Blue Ribbon Housing Committee, we have a plethora of resources, really well done landing page uh, by Howard and staff. But if, our, if a big amount of our concern is that there are a potential amount of residents uh, who, are, who are renters who do not know that they even have the ability to vote in their community, to me, making sure that we have um, some notion of that under the city clerk, uh, to me, makes a lot of sense. But obviously, we will defer this to staff and, and look at staff feedback. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. So just in addition, it's just the ordinances that affect renters. Um, do we have, I guess, ordinances that affect specifically the, renters? The one well? I would th I was thinking of, and it's not a town ordinance, it's the state one. For instance, in New Hampshire, and it's been a while since I looked into this, but I believe you're only allowed to ask for one month's uh, rent as deposit. So there's a couple state laws that, you know, it would be, and we wouldn't even need to necessarily list them out because they're available on the New Hampshire uh, state website, but it would just be a place for somebody to go and get a clearinghouse of, if you're a renter, these are six things that might be helpful for you to know that you might not otherwise know. Uh, for instance, that your deposit, security deposit should be held in escrow and that the landlord has 30 days to give you an itemized list um, of anything that they might be withholding on the security deposit. And it's just just making it streamlined for our residents to be able to access this data because there's so much, you know, the, at, what do we have, 1,700 pieces of legislation before the House. You know, there's just so much data on the state website that if we could just point people to the, the few things that we think are most relevant and best to know, I think that's a good starting point. And then you say, okay, the city's helpful for this point. Let me see what else they have to offer, and then you maybe can segue over to the library page or the rec page and learn more about what the city has to offer, which I think would be helpful for a lot of our residents. I don't think our – there's a core group of the city that is, is well aware of what the city has to offer, but I don't think – I think there's a lot of people that their lives are just too busy. You know, you're raising a family. You've, you've got a job. You're, you're trying to pay the mortgage. You know, you, you may not be aware of everything that our city has to offer if you're an owner or a renter. And I think this is just kind of targeted at that rental community just to make sure they know that they're just as included as the ownership community. Councillor uh, Lombardi. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my only concern for this, I think it's a good idea, um, but I, my concern for it is that um, I know the staff is pretty busy <laughs> and we are, you know, what is going to, who is going to take care of this? Who is going to maintain it? I mean, having a web page takes kind of ongoing maintenance. And I'm just wondering, um, adding that to the staff is a question. Yeah, I mean, I, I can share the concern. I think it's, it's a great idea to organize information that people find useful, and that's, that's, great and we should be a resource for anybody that lives within the city businesses you know um, renters homeowners all of those things we should you know we should strive to do that and if this is an underserved or a non uh, served you know part of the website it seems reasonable to do it it does come with some cost in terms of council Lombardi says not maybe the setup of the page although that's probably somewhat intensive but making sure that the page continues to be relevant mm -hmm. you know um, a a web page the last thing we want is like a web page that's just stale you know that was created in 2024 in 2027 when it has things that are outdated and so you know that is probably a a larger maybe a larger conversation of how we you know go about you know putting things on the website i don't see any you know reason not to include this as part of like the planning department or you know under another part of the website but Assistant Mayor. Um, Councilor Bradley, would you be open to a, um, a friendly amendment to changes to a report back first so we could, as I think as a council, discuss um, what we feel like is relevant and, and can submit things to staff to, to be helpful in the potential establishment of a page? Um, I, mean, I, I just think it's a, it's a, I, I think it is a little bit a lot, a, not a lot, I think it is a lot to put on staff to say, you know, I think, you know, we as a council or, or you know, as a, as a small group um, should, should be putting together a, a very identified list of things that we um, are asking staff to put on this. So maybe it's, it's more of a, a working with staff to decide what should be on this resource page and then coming back to the council. So maybe a report back before the establishment. I guess I, I didn't view this as such a formal involved process. I was thinking a landing site that then could evolve over time. I mean, I think about the work we do every year for the, the veterans and uh, senior and disabled discount. Uh, the work we do every year 
in the assessing department, um, the work our library does about getting the message out for everything. I would say that this, the council shouldn't be getting involved in the, the nitty gritty details too much. I think we should say this is something we'd like and then staff would create what they think makes the most sense based on these guide I guess I, parameters. I would just say as, a, as like if, if you were handed to me and said this page should feature a comprehensive list of helpful links, I think I, I, I think we're asking this to me reads as a very broad stroke and that's why I guess what I'm saying is maybe we, we work to narrow it down to what we're asking, asking staff. I guess does, does that make more sense? I, I guess it does, but I mean I, I, the li I, mean, I think of the library department and how much they do and mm -hmm. how much I'm unaware of what they do. I mean, just uh, for instance, the eclipse glasses and things like that. I, I just don't think that the itemized list is a council. I guess to, to clarify that, a, a report back from staff on who would manage this, what department would oversee this, what would, what would take this on is I guess more is what I'm, what I'm asking for and getting to is that, yes, we, we're talking about the library, but that's a very dedicated page managed by library staff. We don't know what department would be able to take this on and, and I mean, you're looking at having to update it at least every every year when new legislation comes out that, that affects renters. You're looking at, um, you know, anytime any potential zoning comes out, Airbnb laws come out, long-term, short-term, subleasing, tenant protection. So I guess what I'm saying is to kind of run off what the mayor was saying is before we set this up for a long-term haul to make sure we are structurally setting it up for long-term success, meaning that a report back from staff of how would this be maintained, what department would be responsible, and what staff members would be. Does that make, does that clarify a little bit more? I guess I'd, I guess I'd be interested to hear what the other counselors have to say. Oh, uh, <laughs> Councillor Denton, and then uh, City Manager, did you have your hand? I do, but I'm happy to hear from the counselors first. Sure. Um, when it comes to who will oversee this, we defer to the city manager. I don't think we need a report back on how it's going to be run. That's all within her purview. I just simply want to applaud Councillor Bagley for bringing this forward. As a long-term renter, um, there's things which I learned, which I only learned from property at Franklin Pierce Law School, like uh, a security deposit has to be an escrow, like you could only have one month's rent and security deposit and like you need to receive an itemized list of any damage done by the end of the month or they owe you treble. And I've since learning that I've used each and every one of those um, against landlords to get my security deposit back. And most renters don't know those basic things and having a website with information like that, even if you have to click and it takes you someplace else, I think would be incredibly beneficial. Uh, regardless of how the city manager decides it's going to be administered. Councilor Cook. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I, I really like this idea for the simple reason that we learned a lot during the pandemic about renters and the specific challenges they face, um, really around issues of eviction and what our state laws would allow and would not allow. And Unfortunately, people usually don't know what the rules are around eviction until they're in trouble and they're concerned about losing their home. So I think it's really critical that we provide those resources to our residents when we can. Um, and we're in a unique position at the city, at the city level, to provide access to information when people often don't know where to seek that information and they're not sure that the information that they're finding is reliable when they're looking online, whereas the information the city would be essentially vetting in any um, web resource would be reliable information for renters. I think that that's really critical. I was also going to suggest, um, you know, in watching uh, the deliberations of the Public Art Review Committee, they've worked very hard to provide guidance for um, residents around art on our website and I think it's it's this is a possible opportunity for the new housing committee to help provide some guidance as well not to get in the way of their existing work on f trying to find additional affordable housing but once something is set up down the road um, this is something the housing co committee could consider providing guidance for, to the city on what should be included 
on this page that has been discussed. Any other dis discussion? City Manager. Uh, as I was sitting here thinking about the, the departments that would be involved, at first blush, I, I come up with at least five. So what I think will happen out of the gate should this be supported is uh, we'll work internally to stand up what we think is a recommendation. We will provide an informative report back to tell you what we've got and how we plan to roll things forward. So that's what we'll pledge to do if this does receive support. Okay. Okay. So we'll get the report back regardless. You know, I, I think the – so um, – <laughs> I'd say almost everything, you know, sounds great when it's at the, the broadest levels, and I think having, you know, support for, you know, uh, renters, um, it very quickly goes into like a, you know, uh, a renter's bill of rights and the laws that exist there, you know. Um, you know, there's been more news stories in terms of, you know, folks, uh, you know, on the landlord side facing people that are not moving out of places. It's all very difficult, and so what um, – I think the questions that the council is asking uh, of, of Councillor Bagley is who owns this on the city side, not necessarily from a content perspective, because the ownership of that, because eventually somebody will come to a website and see a resource and then immediately feel as though we will be the adjudicators in solving that. And so having a ability to think those things through, and it's not to say like, oh, we could put up a website and put up links on that, and that's fantastic. But inherently, most of these laws are convoluted and not convoluted, to this, but they are interpreted and they will maybe have more than one side of that. And so we will inherently be in, in the part of that uh, from a, uh, a standpoint as a city. And so I would think one of those people would likely be the legal department um, in this. And that's a uh, it's a larger undertaking, I guess, than just a splash page on a website. And so in order for this to be effective, it has to have a useful uh, mechanism behind it. And for the most part, we look at the website of the city of Portsmouth. It is a natural extension of the work that goes on in each city department. And, and you know, it's, we, don't, we don't have any say in it uh, because we are – we don't need to be in the nuts and bolts, but to say that the website is a starting point, it's probably hard to just to start at the website. You have to look at like what would be supporting the website, and those useful links can get very deeply into a extra department or a department within the planning department or the legal department. And so, would love to hear what the city manager says. On first blush, it sounds like a great idea to be inclusive of information here and encourage people that are not participating uh, for you know many reasons to feel as though they can participate and for that reason I'll support it but I want to make sure that when it comes back uh, we do have a further discussion on what that entails from a staffing uh, perspective all right Your Councillor Tabor uh, so uh, has Councillor Bagley accepted the friend limit amendment no for a report back no. well it's going to naturally come up okay yeah I, I think the way it's crafted it the, what I'd understand is the city would stand something up or plan to stand something up and then give a report back to the council. But we don't need a report back on whether or not we should stand something up. Yeah, my amendment was not whether we should. It was what it exactly would entail. But it's off the table, so it's no big deal. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So voting on, we will receive the intention of the council is to vote on uh, this to stand something up and we will get a, a report back informational from the city manager on what that would be and then also what departments would be involved in the ongoing and then uh, we'll you know obviously if there's a um, headcount or anything along those lines um, that would obviously be a, a separate uh, discussion in the city uh, because it would be a staffing uh, as part of the operating budget uh, so there's not a concern that we would be uh, having some sort of unfunded uh, policy or mandate at this point, uh, but we'll hear back from what the city manager states in terms of what's required in terms of manning this. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. On to approvals of grants and donations. Uh, we have the approval of a wellness reward for wellness coordinators initiatives in the amount of $2,000. Your Honor, I move we approve and accept the wellness award for $2,000 as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Next is an acceptance of donation to the fire department for EMS improvements in memory of uh, Edward uh, Mar Markowitz. Markowitz in the amount of $500. Your Honor, I'll move to approve and accept the donation for the fire department as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next, we have an ARPA funded grant amendment number one for Mechanic Street pump station improvements. Your Honor, I move to authorize the city manager to enter into amendment one of ARPA grant agreement with the state of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services for modification of the anticipated project um, substantial completion date to Mechanic Street pump station improvements project by six months to a completion date of January 21st, 2025. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The next is an ARPA funded grant amendment number one for sewer rehabilitation project. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I move to authorize the city manager to enter into an amendment number one of the ARPA grant agreement with the State of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services for modification of the anticipated project substantial completion date to the sewer rehabilitation project by six months to a completion date of uh, March 31, 2025. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? On to the city manager's informational items. Great. Uh, up first will be a verbal update on the status of the community policing facility, and Director Rice is going to share that. Thanks, Peter. Mr. Mayor, City Council, uh, Peter Rice, Director of Public Works. Uh, since the last time we spoke, we've made some good progress relative to um, a number of aspects of the project. Um, the first thing of, of major concern for us was making sure the driveways would work if they were reconfigured, and we've seen some site development plans for that that show uh, with some modifications to the driveways we would improve uh, access, uh, specifically in, uh, relative to ADA compliance uh, for the sidewalks, so that's a, that's a positive aspect. Uh, we've also been uh, making progress uh, working back and forth with uh, the the consultants and the PD in a, uh, in a dynamic um, where we're seeing um, adjustment and right sizing. Um, and I'm, I'm, I feel good about the direction uh, things are going in. And um, you know, we, we anticipate uh, being able to come back with some formal uh, presentation towards the end of May. Uh, the working group obviously will be involved. Um, we'll be meeting with, look forward to meeting with the working group uh, in the next week or so. Uh, but we've, uh, we've made good progress, and I anticipate continuing to make good progress. At the end of the day, um, you know, we need a, f a police station that works for the police uh, in a, in a, in a cost-effective manner, uh, and one that the city will be proud of, um, you know, for the long haul. So uh, I think we're making good progress, and, you know, I look forward to, to continued efforts on this. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Item number two would be a report of donations. These are these are small enough where the council is not required to accept them, but we are obligated to report them to you. So you'll see Deputy City Manager's uh, report of donations for this period. There are four separate donations, all to the cemetery's effort uh, in the amount of $170. So that's just an informational update. Number three, April is Environmental Month. We have many events to talk about. They'll be in the newsletter, thanks to Monty. But the highlights would include Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day, the mayor's personal favorite, April 13th. Uh, that's a Saturday. And on Sunday, April 14th, will be the Sustainability Fair. We have many different departments participating. We had a great turnout last year. We hope for the same this year. Uh, the Water Has a Memory Exhibit will return to Strawberry Bank late in April. We have Arbor Day coming up the last Friday in April, where we get to plant a tree. And that is the assistant mayor's favorite holiday, I think. And then uh, lastly, Earth Week, which will be held from May 5th to the 11th in conjunction with the Portsmouth High School Eco Club. And maybe we can talk about that at um, Student Government Day. So those are the updates related to the month of April. And then lastly uh, is an update regarding the status of our fuel station replacement project. The exciting news is that that project is finally underway after some delay and, and finally identifying funding and getting going. It will take three to four months to bring that back online, and in the ensuing time, you will see city vehicles fueling up at commercial 
gas stations, and you may think that is odd, and that is correct, it is odd, but for the period of time where our pump is down, we have a, a, a way by which we can track who is using what for gas and, and charging back. So that's a temporary fix, but just wanted to call awareness to that it's, it'll be strange to see city vehicles in um, regular gas stations. But that's what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lombardi. Question, Mayor. Thank you. Um, does that include the replacement of tanks? That includes everything. Yes, sir. To be in full compliance with DES. And, yeah. and have they done um, test sites for around the tank, the existing tanks? That is correct. Yes. Uh, Councilor Cook. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to thank the city manager for this. Um, report out on donations, um, and uh, I'm thrilled with the format of this um, in, in compliance with our new donations policy. It has made the work of the council, I feel like, much easier. So Great. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, staff. <laughs> Did you have something under miscell miscellaneous? I, under miscellaneous. All right. Okay. We're on to miscellaneous. We're on to miscellaneous. I just wanted to... Um, uh, some people may know I am the advisor for uh, the business club at the high school, and we have reestablished our FBLA, which is the Future Business Leaders of America. And tomorrow we have six students competing, uh, representing Portsmouth High School at the state level. Um, James, Henry, Cam, Mason, Ben, and Joe. This is the first time, and I think. 10-ish years that uh, Portsmouth will be represented um, in FBLA and so really excited um, to go and cheer on those guys. They've been working really hard. So That's awesome. Best of luck. I'll be there. But. All right. I would now wait a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, Portsmouth.